Hey guys, how is it going? Shinami Sam here to do my final review on Bleach and the last chapter. So Bleach chapter 686 titled Death and a Strawberry Man that did hit the fills. Now, I really did love this chapter, but before we get into the graphs of this chapter, let's actually just sit back and realize what Bleach has done in our lives. Let's sit back and realize the fact that it's gone on for 15 years. How crazy is that? 15 years. That is just unbelievable. Starting in 2001. That is just a, a thing that Kubo should be proud of in general. A 15 years for a series, over 600 chapters, over 680 chapters, coming close to six, coming close to 700 chapters. Like that is amazing, in my opinion. An anime which got oh, which got 366 episodes. Bleach got translated into seven languages or around something like that. Like see the milestones that Kubo's done with his series. Notice that this is his second work, his first was Zombie Powder. So like his second work has impacted so many people. Um and it's just crazy just to sit back to uh, sit back and think we're a part of that. Like we're a part of that legacy of the fifteen years of Bleach in like ten, twenty years. I know how loads of people still talk about Yu Yu Hockey Show. Or like Slam Dunk and stuff like that. Dragon Ball as well. Like people are going to be talking about Bleach as well. Whether it be for good or for bad. It's not going to be forgotten. And that is something what a writer in itself should strive for in my opinion. You create something and you... you, you there's two reasons in my... This is just my thoughts. But there's two reasons why you want to create a story. Now one you create a story to um, pour out your thoughts and feelings about something into a text where it can impact people or the other one is you create a story which has a commentary on something about life itself now with Bleach I say it's a mixture of both we have about the commentary of life itself I was thinking about um uh, I, th I was thinking about it with a couple of people Bleach has a question about philosophy and life and I don't really want to delve into that we know it's like even you think about the Aranka arc about nihility and all that kind of stuff just think about each girl's goals and motives and realism I want to I could talk about Bleach for hours but I don't want this video to be incredibly long so I won't bore you guys into the gripes and topics all about that kind of stuff but um you yeah, know what was I saying yeah it's a fusion of um uh like a commentary about real life itself and it's a fusion of the outpouring of Kubo's feelings. Now, I'm just assuming. I'm not sure. I can't just say, oh yeah, this story is about Kubo's feelings. We will we, we wouldn't be able to know that. We can't. But it's an educated guess who most times with writers, whenever you write something, it's coming from the heart. And especially when you see Kubo's work from the passion that it has, it has to be heartfelt. It has to be um what's the word? Uh visceral, you can say. Now, um with this chapter I just really want to say something. If I can sum up this chapter in... How many words is it going to be? Now, if I can sum up this chapter into a sentence, it could be... Um, okay, so Bleach Chapter 686 is... Now, this is just off my mind, so I'm trying to frame it correctly. So bear with me, guys. Okay, so this chapter... is... A, um... What's the word? An appreciation of the past. Now, I said it, this chapter is an appreciation of, the, of, appreciation of the past. For the old Bleach, like Soul Society, the olden times, when, when Kubo first started it. Now, I, want, I say it's an appreciation of the past because this chapter wasn't for us, in, our, in my opinion. I feel like this chapter, Kubo wanted this chapter, this perfect end, how we see everything, everyone lovey-dovey, you know, in the house, all the friends, everyone at peace. This, I feel like Kubo wanted this from the start. Like, well, maybe not from the start, but I feel like Kubo planned this. This was how the end was supposed to be. Now, the things, a lot of things get left out. Obviously, Kubo didn't plan that. But the last couple of chapters, he wanted it to be something like this. Something very picturesque. Something very um, complete and ideal. And these chapters were. If you think about it, the, this chapter was an ideal, complete, happy chapter. Um, not even, don't consider anything else. Don't consider about plot points not getting addressed. Nothing in itself, this chapter was an amazing chapter. It completed not just because it was so great of like the artwork and the story, it was just great for the characters itself. And this is what I felt like Kubo was trying to do with this chapter. He wanted to forget about everything, about all the commotion of you know people of it getting rushed, about things like ma managing to get um, addressed. He just wanted to write a chapter where he'd be a where he'd be a proud of it being its last chapter. And that's what this chapter was. Notice things like Ichigo, Ichigo's hairstyle himself, his character designs, 
Especially, I know a lot of people making a joke how it's like the Naruto are her style. Could you imagine um, if it's like, I know there's a lot of shonen cliches. Now, imagine this is a shonen cliche titled the Naruto hairstyle. Every single series that is in Weekly Shonen Jump, imagine it. Like, the last chapter, it has to have a massive time skip, and the main protagonist has to have his hairstyle like Naruto. Picture freaking Luffy's hair like that. That would just be hilarious. Or someone else's, like, um, uh,. Deku from Boku no Hero. People like that. That would just be so weird. Like, can you imagine having that hairstyle? Every single shonen protagonist. But, um, as I was saying, yeah, Ichigo's character design, it's more of a glimpse to the past. Look at Ichigo from the start of chapter one. Like, from the start. A bit of the short hair, Ichigo's expressions. It was very, uh, nostalgic. That's what I could put from this chapter. Very nostalgic. Because stuff with, like, the backgrounds. Kubo drawing backgrounds in this chapter. We saw Ruki and Renji. Everything just really reminded me of the old times of Bleach. And it, it gave me that feeling of how... This is how Kubo wanted it to end. Kubo wanted it to end with a, comp a feeling of completeness. A feeling of satisfaction. And that's what I did get from this chapter. Now, um, I want to get into the gripes of what this chapter actually was. There was a lot of things happening in this chapter. From reading it off at first glance, even my reaction, I was a little bit baffed. Like, with the whole you watch and the reaction and all that kind of thing. Now... What kind of Bleach chapter would it be if Koopa could not troll us or have us confused? It can't, it can't be. There has to be a chat. Koopa always has to confuse us. And I, I find that so hilarious that he does it even till the end. Like, the last page, it was just like, so the blade has dot, dot, dot. And we're just like, Koopa, what is it? Like, I just found that amazing. So in this chapter, we start off with a colour page. Two colour pages, which may I say... Is amazing. The, f the first one with you're seeing Kurosaki Kazui. Love that name. I I'm just loving the kids already. Ichika and Kazui. It's just oh, they just look so adorable. But um, the first page starts off with Kazui. Just such bright colours. Very ambient. Just full of life. This is what it really gave me. Full of life. This chapter was. It really came out to life with um the backgrounds, the colour of, of Kazui's hair, and I know it's obviously orange, but like just the brightness of it, it gave you such youth and, uh, and joy just whilst reading that. Now, the, what, the second widespread page, seeing each of you, seeing everyone, I just thought that was perfect in my opinion. The colour scheme of, you know, when they're having around the bands, that's the kind of, that's the colour scheme of bleach, the, uh, the red, white and blue, so that was just really awesome to see. Um, Yuzu carrying it all grown up. Uh, I liked Uyu, now, I, I, I don't know... I really, I, when I read a chapter, I, there's always a couple of things that stick out to me, and what stuck out to me in this chapter was definitely Uryu. Now, I don't know what to put, I don't know how to frame it, but I really did like how Kubo portrayed Uryu in this chapter, and I'll get to that um, in the late of the review. But, so yes, the widespread page is just amazing, we see Uryu, he's not even looking at us, he's just facing off in the back, just being chill, minding his own, not minding his own business, sorry, but just being comfortable with his own vibe, same with Chad, Olihime, I really liked how Olihime was just like, um, with Ichigo, and then Ruka just looking so amazing right there, just chilling out, that's just Ruka's attitude, she just doesn't care, and Renji, I'm really actually liking his hairstyle, it kind of suits him, now, um, with the start of the chapter, we start off with the Soul Society with Byakuya, and uh, soy fun. Now, this comes, it, it's really cool how they kind of do this because it, it, throughout this chapter it keeps panning back and forth, back and forth between Soul Society um, and the live, world of the living, but also the, between the kids as well. And I really wonder, I, I'm, I'm really interested in Kubo's choice of why he done that chapter in that such of a way. With me, from my thoughts I can get from it, he's kind of making it seem, um, like very, he's kind of, I don't know how to make, but he's kind of seeing, it's very like roller coaster, but in a good way, like a roller coaster of emotions. We're going back and forth, seeing our favorite characters, seeing the things that we love, the slice of life and the action, all that kind of stuff, but also the hint of mystery, and that is the kids. We see Kazuri in this chapter, and he's just doing like, what, freaking teleporting out? I'm, I don't even know. Um, and then Ichika comes out right at the end, like everything, just the whole, um, just the, the whole structure of this chapter was really awesome. I really do like the ending as well. How Ichiko, how she just came out from Ichigo's room. Just how, you know, Rukia did as well. So it was just really awesome, to, in my opinion. Now, um, yes, I've got a couple of things to address. Now, with, there's a lot of uh, confusion on what's happening. Now, me, myself, I'm confused as well. So I can only just theory craft on what it actually is. And that is the Soul King. What is happening? Who is the Soul King right now? Now, there's a lot of thoughts of it, of it being Aizen. I think Aizen was the main valid one, but I don't think so anymore. Um, so it's either, it's either down to Aizen or Kurosaki Kazui. Now, I feel like... 
the way Cooper ended this chapter, he kind of he was he kind of felt like, oh, since I'm ending it, I might as well kind of you know do something wacky and just like have you guys theorizing it. Now I feel like the Soul King is Kaz um is Kazui. I do feel like it is, but I don't. It's weird to it's weird to understand this. I don't think um Kurosaki Kazui is the Soul King, but I do think. Kazui has the power, if you kind of get what I mean. I don't think he's the one that's, you know, his, he himself's the linchpin. No, I still think it's Aizen, but I do think Kazui has absorbed some of the Soul King's power from that. Now, if that is true, that makes us think, what the heck is Kazui's power? Because we see him, first of all, we see him transporting, I, I'm like teleporting all over the place, then we see him absorbing things. So if my theor theorizing it has to be is... It's obviously a mixture between Ichigo and Olihime's abilities. Now, Olihime's abilities is kind of like rejection, nullification. It basically just rejects anything. Um, and that's the whole thing, you know, so, something which is transcendent above the gods. Now, um, this is why um, I kind of want you guys to bear with me on this, because this may seem a little bit fabricated and a little bit loose, but this is how I, this is what I think Kazui's power is. So, okay, so Kazui's power, I, Kazui's power is... A mixture of Olihime's and Ichigo's. Ichigo's powers, which resides within Kazui, is that can only be used when Kazui goes into a Shinigami form. Now, Kazui Shinigami form is is really weird actually because it, he he maintains the Shinigami uh, like the Sunpat and all of that whilst he's in a human state, unless he could like sublime through it, like his soul can come out naturally. I don't think it is. I just think he can naturally, you know, use his. Uh, the Shinigami abilities whilst in a human form, and that we've never seen that before. If picture Ichigo every time he had to put cone in his body and all, he had to take his soul out and all that kind of stuff. So that is really interesting for, at first. Now, whilst in human, I do feel that like, I think Kazui's powers are more akin to Olihime's. Olihime's is rejection, or you know, something like uh, I don't know. I think mean, one of his abilities are a little bit annoying. Not annoying, sorry, it's a little bit um confusing. So I don't really know how to, you know, summarize what Olihime's abilities are, but it's basically rejection of things. Now, Kazui's abilities, which we saw him showcase in this chapter, we saw him showcase first of all teleportation where it may be. Well, that it, it seemed like he was teleporting. And then he when he put his hand through the hole, like the reactive vanished. So that seems like a bit of absorption. So I feel like Olihime's abilities are it's something similar to Olihime's, but instead, uh, Kazui's got the abilities of um, just like negating anything, or like just yeah, something 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 akin to negating a nullification kind of thing. So with the negation, um, when he you know absorb, I, I don't yeah, I've absorbed or just like you know made the reactive vanish. So he either absorbed it, meaning he's got you know the part he can absorb anything, which is kind of similar to Jewel Box and a bit of each base actually. Um, so I don't know if Kubo is hinting at anything about that. Tell me if to come below on that. Uh, and um, when he was teleporting, so it could either be he managed to you know teleport. Um, from Hiyori's place back to uh, Ichigo's room, or he was that fast. And if he was that fast, then that means he's, whilst in human form, he can use his Shinigami abilities, which is pretty cool in my opinion. That also means everyone can see him. So, people like um, Yuzu and Kari... Ka no, Yuzu or Karen? Yuzu. Yuzu's the youngest one. Yeah, so people like Yuzu would be able to see him, or like people who had no spiritual pressure would be, uh, and Riatsu, or spiritual awareness whatsoever, they'd be able to see Kazui showcasing his abilities in his Shihak show with his Sunpak Toe. Now, Kazui's Sunpak Toe is pretty cool as well because it's Ichigo's Sangetsu. Well, tens of Sangetsu. Now, the whole fact of Ichigo's abilities and his Sunpak Toe, I can't really dive into that in a chapter, but realize Ishin's. Ishin Sanpato's gone on Getsu, then Ichigo Zangetsu. Now, if there was ever a sequel or we managed to, or anything where we could find out, where we, basically if the story ever managed to continue in a sequel format or like an anime or whatever, then maybe Kazumi Sanpato would be named something similar to that, and that would be pretty cool. Now, um, what, was I, what else was I going to say? With Ichika, Ichika is just so damn adorable, man. Like, she just looks awesome. And I just really love her appearance. And you can tell she is so 
cheeky. Like, she is just so naughty. First of all, because of just her eyes and just her character design. She's got the hairstyle of Renji, and like her eyes bulging out with excitement, it's like Rikia. But she's got the same behaviour of Renji and Rikia from when they were kids. Because remember the flashbacks when they were in Hanging Dog, Rikia and Renji always run, running around the market, stealing food and all that kind of stuff. Like, they were, they were just pretty much like rascals when they were a kid. They were just mucking about. Um, and that's what Ichigo looks like. She looks like she goes out and seeks trouble just for the fun of it. She seems like she's a troublemaker, but it's cute. Like, she's so adorable that it looks cute when she's like, if she does those kind of things. Whereas Kazui, it's like, Kazui's kind of got more of the mannerisms which are similar, akin to Orihime. That's what I feel like. I feel like Kazui's mannerisms that we saw in this chapter was more akin to Orihime's. Ichiku's was more akin to Renji's. So I really do kind of like that because picture it, if there was ever a sequel, it's kind of be like it'd be Onihime and Renji because obviously Bleach was pretty much the, the protagonist was Ichigo and Ruku, you could say. Now, if there was a sequel, the protagonists would be Kazui and um, Ichigo. But picture their, their mannerisms, their personalities would be wouldn't be similar to Ruki and Ichigo, but instead similar to Olihime and Renji. So it'd be like the brash kind of running into the into things and always being cocky, which is Renji, and the shy, innocent, um, and always just putting on that smile, which is freaking Olihime. So it'd be so cool, and especially to see those personalities develop and their feelings and all that kind of thing. So if you ever did get a sequel, that would be amazing. And just picture how freaking hacks Kazui must be, especially Ichigo as well. First of all, Ichigo, um, just. How, look how strong Renji and Ryukyu is. First of all, they both went to the Soul King Palace, so they still got that hyper, super dense reaction. I'm sure that must have got passed down to the kid. But I, I, just imagine the reaction that, uh, and the spiritual pressure. Like She must have such a gift for it as well, and such an, a talent for it, because she, we did find out in this chapter she's a go tie apprentice. Obviously, that's a new thing. I, I don't think we ever heard of that throughout the Bleach series. But um, she's very young. Yeah, she's you know she's got her she's got her sunpuck toe and everything, so it does show you she's quite of a power. She's got a gift. Maybe she's a prodigy. Imagine that. How cool would that be? Now, if Kazuri, I feel like he's kind of prodigy as well, but he just must be so OP. The fact he's got each of those abilities and Olihime's Olihime's, which can just pretty much surpass anything and reject anything, and then each of those. What about the hollow stuff? What if Kazuri's got hollow powers? Who knows? Like. The, the, the possibilities are endless, and you can just theorycraft about it and just hypothesize it. Now, we did get a bit of Aizen in this chapter, and that was amazing in my opinion. I really did like Aizen's, um, his speech in this chapter as well. I feel like Kubo was talking to us, because, um, remember, the pre I think it was in the previous chapter, yeah, it was the previous chapter, and, you know, Shuhei was talking about, oh yeah, I've mastered Bunkai, and all that kind of stuff, like, um... People are saying like, oh yeah, Kubo's just making a joke, he's just trolling us, he's speaking through Shurei. Now I feel like Kubo's also speaking through um, Aizen as well. Um, because with Aizen's speech about courage, look at, look at it, look at it deep, deeper. Like, read into it, read between the lines. What is he actually talking about? Okay, so his speech, he says courage and he says um, the fact of... The, the, just the whole existence of fear of death and the whole existence of, you, of your life being able to be vanished at any moment, that is what is beauty in life itself. The, he's basically implying that the imperfections of life is what makes life perfect. Um, and with that, Kubo's kind of telling us, yeah, we may have got rushed. Maybe it got cancelled by Weekly Sean and Jump. Kubo probably possibly did have... He probably... He, he did have... um. A bad relationship with his editors. Um, he didn't manage to address a lot of the plot points. There was a lot of fans that hated his work. Some, like Bleach wasn't the most best series. It weren't perfect, but he's telling us the fact that those imperfections. It's still an amazing series. The things that he's done, the things that this series actually can at attest to, is quite beautiful. And still, the beauty is in that is in the writing. Like in my opinion, every chapter of Bleach, I love it. By deeping it, by delving into it, and just thinking about stuff. Now, I'm not saying like in the past it was much better. It has declined. Now it has gone a bit worse. I'm not saying it's terrible, but you could definitely see the shift in quality from like Soul Society to Thousand Year Blood War. You can definitely see a difference. But I'm trying to tell you, like, don't think about the imperfections. That's what Cooper was trying to say. And that's what Eisen was saying about even death. Don't think about death. Your life, you. you 
you you live not thinking you don't you live not thinking that your 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 every day may be your last. You live because you want to go on, you want to progress, you want to better yourself, you want to meet new people. And with bleach, don't think about the imperfections. Think about the perfections. Think about what Ichigo and Ruka have done. Think about their travels. Think about the connections which was formed in that and think all about that and then read this chapter again. I implore you. Watch Bleach. Watch the greatness of Bleach, the Soul Society, the Aranka arc, the feels when Ichigo gets killed by Ukiura. Think about when um, Rukia fights Aranero. All of those kind of awesome stuff. And then read this chapter. Because the fact is, I know, I'm, I know this review is very long, but um, the fact is, uh, Bleach is, is extremely real. It's not like Naruto, it's not like One Piece. Naruto wants, wanted to become the whole car gay. One Piece wanted to get the, um, you know, Luffy wanted to get the One Piece. Ichigo just wanted to protect his friends. This is why Bleach is awesome. And I, I don't feel like a lot of people truly do talk about the, the realism in Bleach. Not everyone, knows what they, not everyone knows what they want to do in life, especially a 15-year-old kid. You don't know what you want to do in life. A lot of 15-year-old kids and teenagers don't, want, don't know what they want to do in life. Some do, but a lot of people don't. And that's what Ichigo was. Ichigo just wanted his family and friends to be protected. And that's just pretty much the simple, the simple, the little things in life and what a lot of people think about. I know a lot of people, they have dreams, goals and visions, but the basics, you just want your friends and family to be looked after. You want the good moments with your friends and family and the people you care about. And that's what Bleach was all about. And that's what this chapter was all about. And, that, and I leave it at that because... um. I know there's a lot more things to talk about this chapter, there's you watch and all that kind of stuff. Now, I can talk about this chapter for hours, I can talk about how great of a series this is, I can talk about how the quality has declined, but at the end of this day, this video is a review for the chapter, and I've reviewed it. I've told you guys my loves about it, I've told you my gripes, I've been confused a bit about this chapter, but all in all, it's amazing. And what from this chapter, it looks like it's a setup. Now, I don't think it is a setup for a sequel, because picture, now, I, I said about the awful comments at the start, Go and read them, because what they say, the two things which pop up in literally all of the manga's comments are, um, I'll be excited for your new work, and get some rest. Now, the fact that Older said get some rest, and a lot of other um, manga's get, um, said get some rest, it kind of alludes to the fact that they knew Kubo's situation, and what everything was happening. And I, f what, me, myself, as a reader and a fan of this series, I want Kubo to get some rest, in my opinion. I want him to sit back and relax. Because 15 years of greatness, that's what he's done. He's created a series which it stayed in our minds. And it's going to stay in our minds and impact people for the years to come. And in my opinion, that's already a win. That's a victory at the end of the day. Now, um, maybe there, there'll be a possibility for a sequel. Maybe an anime will come. Right now, I don't even want to think about it, to be honest. Because um, I'm, I'm satisfied right now. Let's not even do, I'm not even considering anything else from this chapter. I'm satisfied. I'm from a fan of this series. I'm satisfied and I'm grateful to read this series. Now, as this being my last review, I am extremely um, privileged. I am honoured to review Bleach to you guys week after week. Ever since my first one from Bleach chapter 593. I've loved it. It's been an awesome ride. I, I've been a fan from Bleach from the day. But all I can say as a reviewer of Bleach and as... Um, as I've been a YouTube YouTuber. Bleach is not going to go from my channel. It won't. So I'm just letting you guys know about that. Also, I'm just going to tell because, in effect, it is going. You could say like, it's not. I'm still going to be talking about Bleach, but it's still gone. Like it's finished, and that is sad. It still it has a sense of finality to it, but also, in an ending and in a sense of finality, there's also beauty to it. So from what I can say to my heart to yours. It has been amazing. That's all I can say. Words cannot express how excited I've been to be talking about Bleach week after week. And I wouldn't take it back for a second. I wouldn't wish anything to be different. If I can go back in time, I wouldn't do anything because I don't want to change this experience. And this experience has truly been amazing. So this is Shinigami Sam saying bye. Please tell me your thoughts and comments below. Tell me about your journey of Bleach. Tell me why you love Bleach. Tell me what you thought of this chapter. Tell me what you... Just tell me anything about Bleach. We'll continue the discussion down below. Now the whole thing, if I missed anything out in this review, don't worry because I'll definitely put it in the description. So this is Shinami Sam and I'm going to say goodbye. See you guys, it's been fun.